Nima, we all woke up in 1998, 1999, and suddenly discovered that 70% or so of the universe is something that none of us, not only never heard of before, but never even conceptualized. Something called dark energy. Appeared from nowhere. What's it all about? Well, so um, from the point of view of uh, fundamental physics, uh, what's mysterious isn't so much that there's dark energy, but uh, rather that there's so little of it. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, uh, dark energy is a peculiar kind of uh, energy that, uh, that fills the universe. Um, uh, let me compare it with other kinds of, uh, if I compare it with other kinds of energy, like uh, matter, uh, stars, you and me. Um, well, as the universe expands, uh, the, uh, the number of, of planets stays constant, the number of stars stays constant, more or less, but their density gets smaller because, because the universe the bigger is, getting volume. Bi is getting bigger. So it's the same so amount of ma matter in, in a bigger volume. volume. Exactly. Okay. Density so, so, decreases. So the density of energy, the energy density, right. drops. Right. Um, and that's associated with the fact that, uh, that in such a universe, uh, because the density of energy is what's responsible for curving space and time, according to Einstein, uh, that, that in such universes, uh, 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 the rate at which the universe expands slows down. So that's a decelerating universe. Dark energy is a kind of energy where the energy density actually stays completely constant. It doesn't change at all as the universe gets bigger. The energy density stays completely fixed. Because it is the property of the space itself, the empty space itself. Indeed. So the so most natural expands, explanation yeah. for what the dark energy is, is the energy density of the vacuum. Okay, and so that's, that's, that's fixed. And it turns out that if the energy density is fixed, instead of the universe decelerating, the universe should be accelerating. Okay? And so it doubles in size, roughly speaking. Because as the, as the space rate. expands, there's more of there's this more and more energy. dark there's energy more of this stuff. relative to the gravity of all the um, matter, everything else. which stays exactly. constant. Exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, now the problem has always been that, uh, that, that if we try to come up with an estimate for how much dark energy there should be, we get an answer that's absurdly, uh, and theorists got an answer that was absurdly larger than what the even experimental limits on the dark energy would be. In fact, we didn't need to do any experiment. We just had to open our eyes and see that we weren't getting ripped apart by a universe that was, uh, that was accelerating incredibly rapidly. So before 1998, most, theor most theorists uh, assumed that there was something just terribly wrong with this calculation, mm. horribly wrong with this calculation. We're missing some very deep principle that made the energy of the vacuum exactly zero. No one could imagine how they could do a calculation which got the answer wrong by 10 to the 120. <laughs> now, something has to cancel. Some effect has got to make the answer not 10 to the 120, but much, much smaller. So, uh, so the most natural the most natural thing that people assumed, really for no particularly rational reason, was that some deep principle made it exactly equal to zero. So what was shocking about the experimental discovery wasn't that it's possible for the universe to be accelerating. This, as I said, that the, the, the mystery is why isn't it accelerating much, much more rapidly, but that it was accelerating at all. Hmm. Because it removed this hope that there was some deep principle that would remove this problem altogether and set it exactly, set the vacuum energy exactly equal to zero. Um, and so, uh, uh, so a lot of the early theoretical work, in fact, was, um, or some of it was, uh, was, was trying to hold to this idea that maybe the actual vacuum energy was exactly equal to zero and there was some other mechanism that was driving uh, the acceleration of the universe. People today still talk about alternatives to the vacuum energy for what might be driving the expansion of the universe, uh, the acceleration of the universe. And we don't know for a fact that what's driving it is the cosmological constant is vacuum energy. Um, but it's, it's com completely consistent with all the data, and it's by far the simplest possibility. And any other explanation for what's driving it would still have to explain why the vacuum energy <laughs> is so tiny. So that's why it was such a big shock to the theoretical system. Um, so, so how are you attacking this? From what standpoint? How are you attacking it observationally? How are you attacking it theoretically, experimentally? This, this seems to be perhaps the central issue of fundamental physics. Today. I believe it is, a I mean, not just me. I think many people believe it's, it's, it's the central issue of, uh, of uh, fundamental physics today. And um, from the experimental point of view, probably the most important thing to do is characterize in as detailed a way as possible what the dark energy looks like. And in particular, 
how much dark energy there was five billion years ago, eight billion years ago, ten billion years ago, compared to the amount there is today. So see if so, it's changing. To see and... if it's changing at all. Right. Um, in fact, uh, 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 if the explanation for the dark energy is the vacuum energy, is what yeah. I just said, the most natural explanation, the simplest explanation, then that makes a very specific prediction that the rate, that the dark energy sh uh, component should not be changing at all with time. Okay. Um, and uh, so there are experiments that, 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 that are sensitive to whether the dark energy is changing with time. The, the dark and, energy of, of a given volume, the, 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 de the, the, the density. Right, exactly. Yeah, because right. the, the, the gross amount would be increasing of course, of as course, space exactly, expands. Exactly, that's right, that's yeah. right. Um, but uh, but, but there, there, there are experiments that, that, are, that are sensitive to whether the dark energy density is, is changing with time. And any evidence that it is changing with time would have very profound consequences because it would tell us it cannot be a cosmological <laughs> constant. Okay? Right, right. I mean, so, um, and in my view, that, 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 that would be a colossal crisis. <laughs> it, it's already a crisis for it to be a cosmological constant, but, uh, but I would just give up and go home <laughs> if, uh, if, if the No, I'm counting on with you time. to solve right. this problem. Uh, buddy. I so, want you to stay on the blackboard. <laughs> so, so, so I think, uh, so, so that's probably the most important uh, a thing for uh, uh, experimentally uh, to do um, to, to really to measure its uh, uh, its variation with time or okay. absence thereof. Okay. Um, from the theoretical point of view, uh, there are still a number of attempts to try to explain the acceleration of the universe without using a cosmological constant. Mm. Uh, uh, many of my friends have engaged in such activities. I myself have engaged in some in such activities. I have to say, it, it feels very distasteful. Um, uh, because there is this much simpler solution, which is that it is a vacuum energy. But still, it's important to explore theoretical alter alternatives, if nothing else, um, in order to give a sort of foil for other possibilities sure. that the experimentalists could be looking for. But my guess is that, uh, is that while it's great fun to come up with these uh, theoretical al alternatives to a vacuum energy, it, it will turn out to just be the, the vacuum energy. That's driving this accelerating expansion. That's driving expansion. the acceleration. And okay. once, one can, once you convince yourself that it is a vacuum energy, now you have a real problem. Uh, and you have the problem of trying to understand why that vacuum energy is so tiny. And um, uh, here, again, there are uh, the classic reaction has been to try to come up with dynamical mechanisms to try to modify what we know about the laws of, uh, of in this case, gravity. Um, to try to explain why uh, why the vacuum energy is so tiny, and uh, you know many attempts have been made along these lines. All of them so far have uh, uh, don't even make internal uh, theoretical sense, mm. um, and uh, and uh, seem relatively contrived. But um, but still, that's 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 one set of things that that you can try to do. Many people have done. I have done as well. Uh, is to, for example, try to modify what gravity looks like at very, very long distances um, in, order to, uh, in order to say uh, that even though the vacuum energy is actually big, it doesn't gravitate very much so that, uh, so that the universe isn't, uh, uh, isn't accelerating at a very, very large rate. Um, uh, none of these ideas make that much sense. Uh, the orthogonal possibility is that it's really it's a straight vacuum energy. There's nothing modified with gravity at long distances, but we live in a multiverse. And, uh, and that, of course, opens up uh, a, a whole other set of theoretical possibilities that are, uh, that are fascinating to explore. And the multiverse uh, solves the problem of the of, uh, vacuum energy how? Uh, the multiverse says that there's um, actually zillions of universes where zillions is maybe 10 to the 500 or 10 to the 1,000 or just an enormous number. There are so many of them. Um, and. Uh, uh, you see, already the fact that our universe is accelerating means that there's parts of our own space-time that we're never going to see again. There are parts of our space-time that are accelerating from us, uh, away from us, so that light that they emit will never get to us. Well, um, uh, as soon as you start, as soon as you realize the existence of such regions, it's a hop, skip, skip and a jump <laughs> to think that there might be, uh, I mean, already, I, I want to stress, already in our own universe, it means that there's, that there's a little region 20 billion light years away, 30 billion light years away. That that's, will, that, that's, that's there, but really we, there. Which is really there, but which we'll never see again.
Okay. Now, of course, because it's still continuously connected to our universe, the laws look the same there. Everything looks more or less the same there, even though we'll never see it again. But it's a hop, skip, and a jump in your mind's eye to imagine that you can then keep going further and further out. There might be pockets out there that start looking drastically different than ours. And in fact, uh, uh, this is a natural consequence of, of any accelerating universe, um, that it'll eventually have regions like that. It'll have regions like that. And if there are different possible ways of realizing a long distance universe, then, then at least in your mind's eye and the theorist's eye, there are regions of space time, which are not in causal contact with our, uh, with us, but which realize different possible long distance, uh, laws of nature which will have different values of the vacuum energy. And if there's 10 to the 500 universes, there are so many different universes with so many different values of the vacuum energy that, of course, the vast majority of them will be empty, but in a tiny fraction of them, the universe will be accelerating so slowly as to allow uh, interesting structure to emerge, like happens in our universe. So that's the multiverse sort of explanation, the environmental explanation for the uh, smallness of the cosmological constant. But as I've, as I've as I've uh, uh, pointed out just in my explanation, there's reason to be wary of it. There's reason to be suspicious of it. There's reason to wonder uh, why we should be invoking regions of space and time that we're never going to see again in order to explain something about our own universe. And, well, that's why it's exciting. That's why it's, a, it's, it's an area of current research. We don't know how to think about it yet. Um, we don't know whether it's possible to consistently talk about all these other universes. We don't know for a fact that it's impossible. And so what we're, uh, what we're struggling to find is a mathematical framework in which we can address these questions. But that's, this entire line of research is completely, uh, totally inspired by this shocking discovery that the universe is, uh, is accelerating.